Biovivacious. I am Sebastian. Biovivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamentals of biosciences and make the subject exciting. Now let us deal with the bypass reactions or the unique reactions of gluconeogenesis. Remember, we will begin from the last stage of glycolysis. So we are trying to reverse it. The last step of glycolysis was PEP was converted to pyruvate. This was the last step. So now in gluconeogenesis, we are going to convert PEP back to phosphoenol pyruvate. Remember in the beginning sessions on, on metabolism, in the introductory sessions, we have seen that if you want to reverse a pathway, normally in metabolism, it will always take a different route. I want you to pay attention to that. So it will take a different route in order to reverse a particular step. And you will see here one such example. So now we are going to convert pyruvate back into phosphoenol pyruvate. Let us look at pyruvate. Now this pyruvate is, as you know, it is produced from phosphoenol pyruvate as an end product of glycolysis. Pyruvate can also be produced from an amino acid alanine. We have seen glucose alanine shuttle. Pyruvate can also be produced from alanine. Now, here comes another very, very important step of gluconeogenesis. That is in order to have a finer control of this mechanism, we will use the concept of compartmentalization. Most of the reactions of gluconeogenesis will occur in the cytoplasm. But there are steps that are taking place in mitochondria. In the first step, in the first bypass reaction of gluconeogenesis will occur in the mitochondria. So assume this is the mitochondria. So the first bypass reaction will occur there. So therefore the first bypass reaction is to convert pyruvate into phosphoenol pyruvate. Therefore this pyruvate must get inside the mitochondria. So it has to become mitochondrial pyruvate. Mitochondria has got a transporter for pyruvate. So it can be transported into mitochondria. Another possibility for generating pyruvate is, as we have seen, alanine can be deaminated and pyruvate is made available in the mitochondria. Once pyruvate is formed in the mitochondria, remember I am writing the structure here, so this is pyruvate. Pyruvate. Now this pyruvate has to be converted into phosphoenol pyruvate. Now to convert this into phosphoenol pyruvate, what we are going to do is, because remember the, the forward reaction is highly uh, exergonic reaction. So therefore we need to invest a lot of energy in order to reverse it. And remember this in this step we have produced ATP molecules. So therefore we will invest energy to reverse pyruvate back into phosphoenol pyruvate in mitochondria. In the first step is catalyzed by, uh, we add bicarbonate ion HCO3 minus. We add a bicarbonate and convert that into something called an oxaloacetic acid. Remember oxaloacetic acid is a four carbon compound. Let us write the structure of oxaloacetic acid. This is the structure of oxaloacetic acid. Now it is a four carbon compound whereas this is a three carbon compound. A CO2 is attached. Now this CO2 is attached with the help of a very important uh, uh, coenzyme. That coenzyme is biotin from biotin. So you know that biotin 
is one of the vitamins, a water soluble vitamin. Biotin is responsible for the main function of biotin is carbo in participating carboxylation reaction. So what is the name of this enzyme? The name of the enzyme is pyruvate carboxylase. Okay. Let us look at pyruvate carboxylase because you will find in metabolism very few carboxylases. Pyruvate carboxylase is one of them. Then you will find acetyl coa carboxylase, propionyl coa carboxylase, etc. So let us quickly see how this pyruvate carboxylase, uh, just a brief understanding of this particular enzyme. So this is a tetramer. This enzyme is a tetrameric enzyme. So it has roughly about each monomeric unit has got about uh, 1,180 amino acids. So starting from one. So in the first 350 amino acid is the place where ATP binds. This is the ATP binding domain. So from 1,100, this is the place biotin binding domain okay so therefore the biotin molecule is uh, first it binds the biotin binds to a co2 molecule maybe it is nice that we also look at uh, the structure of biotin i'm just drawing the structure of biotin for the benefit of the So uh, this is uh, nitrogen number one and it is this place in the CO2 will be bound. CO2 is bound to here and then this CO2 is transferred. Now this is uh, CH2, this is the full structure of, uh, okay. Now this is a lysine residue which is attached to the protein, okay. So therefore, this is lysine, lysine of the enzyme. So this portion, this much is the, the vitamin, uh, uh, the vitamin biotin, and here the CO2 is bound. Now, to the protein, the coenzyme is bound, and CO2 is bound. So this is called a biotinyl, tinyl enzyme. It's called the biotinyl enzyme. Now remember, so therefore, attaching CO2 molecule to biotin becomes the first step. Attaching CO2 to biotin becomes the first step. Let us write it in this way so that we have greater clarity on this one. So therefore, this is the overall reaction for conversion of uh, pyruvate into oxaloacetic acid. So let us go through this quickly. So therefore, first of all, activation of bicarbonate occurs. So it forms a complex. Then as we have seen, biotin, enzyme. So to that, if the CO2 is attached and so it becomes a biotinyl enzyme. Now, remember by investing uh, one ATP, we have activated this enzyme or activated biotin so that CO2 is attached there. Now this, combined form when CO2 is attached to this biotin it's quite activated so if the delta G0 prime for this particular cleavage if you want to break this it is about minus 20 kilojoules that energy is enough remember you breaking here that energy is enough to add a CO2 group to pyruvate so that it becomes oxaloacetic acid so there is no additional energy investment is happening so therefore what happens is now we have oxaloacetic acid formed and where is this oxaloacetic acid formed it is in the mitochondrial matrix let us write the structure of oxaloacetic acid this is oxaloacetic acid now this is formed in the mitochondrial matrix now we are drawing a mitochondria so the problem is in the next step of gluconeogenesis will happen in the cytoplasm. So therefore, this oxaloacetic acid has to be brought out 
But here there is a problem. The problem is there is no transporter for oxaloacetic acid. What to do now? So nature has devised a mechanism. That mechanism is convert this molecule to malate. Malate. So the structure of malate is like this. Structure is like this. So therefore, two hydrogens are O, H and H. So this is the structure of malate. Now these two hydrogens are provided by NADH plus H plus, another oxidation reduction reaction and catalyzed by an enzyme known as malate dehydrogenase. This malate dehydrogenase is present in the mitochondrial matrix. So you are producing malate. Why are we converting oxaloacetic acid into malate? Because there is a transporter for malate. This is a malate transporter. Okay. Once it becomes, once it is, this transporter now will transfer malate into in the cytoplasm. So you will have malate in the cytoplasm. And this is transported for an incoming inorganic phosphate. So half of the work is done now. Now, this we are removing. So therefore, we have brought an equivalent of oxaloacetic acid into the cytoplasm. Now, the next step is to convert this into oxaloacetic acid, the same oxaloacetic acid. So here also you need a malate dehydrogenase enzyme and an NAD plus is converted back into an NADH plus an H plus. So therefore, you produce your oxaloacetic acid which is required for the next step in gluconeogenesis. You have brought out a molecule which was in the mitochondria into cytoplasm. You have also brought out one NADH into cytoplasm. Because this you need in the reverse reactions when you convert 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate. So this is something which is part of the in the first bypass reaction. Now, in the next step is to converting this oxaloacetic acid to phosphoenolpyruvate. To convert oxaloacetic acid now into pyruvate, let us write oxaloacetic acid here. This is going to be converted to pyru uh, sorry, phosphoenolpyruvate. Phosphoenolpyruvate. Now, to do this conversion, this is a 4 carbon compound and this is a 3 carbon compound. One carbon will be released as CO2 molecule. It is carbon which we added earlier. That is removed. So therefore, you will see this kind of um, a concept which is being repeated again and again in several pathways of uh, several pathways. You will see that in fatty acid this is happening. You will find also in carbohydrate like PPP, you will see that it is happening. CO2 is removed in order, TCA you will see this is happening in order to drive a reaction. So therefore, to do this, you require a GTP molecule. So another nucleotide, another kind of nucleotide we are making use of. So GTP, so PEP is formed and this will be converted to GDP. PI is attached here. So, this is catalyzed by an enzyme known as phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. This is a very uh, commonly used short form. Phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. This is also an isoenzyme. This is found in the cytoplasm as well as in the mitochondria. In mammalian system, this particular reaction occurs in the, in the cytoplasm. So, therefore, now let us write the overall uh, reaction for this particular conversion. The overall reaction is you have a pyruvate. So you are spending two high energy nucleotides, one ATP and one GTP. And that is used to drive this reaction. So therefore, the overall delta G0 prime of this reaction is somewhere around plus 0 0.9 kilojoules per mole. So therefore, thermodynamically, this reaction is pushed uh, forward with, for the uh, 
especially by the CO2 that is being added and then released. So as I mentioned, so addition of CO2 and its removal, subsequent removal is one of the theme which will repeatedly come in metabolic reaction. So this is how we bypass the first step, first roadblock in, of glycolysis in gluconeogenesis. So now we have a product which is phosphoenol pyruvate. How do we proceed with the phosphoenol pyruvate back into uh, production of glucose 6-phosphate? That is going to be our next discussion. So once we have phosphoenol pyruvate that is formed, now if the same set of enzymes which we used in glycolysis, they work in the reverse direction. For example, enzymes like uh, phosphoglycerol mutase, uh, PG kinase, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, dehydrogenase enzyme, aldolase, triose phosphate isomerase, all of them will work in the backward direction till you get fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This is very important because now we come to the second roadblock. Now, um, what is important for us to understand how this movement occurs? That is because the, all these reactions are possible because uh, in the free energy difference between the two pools of intermediates is approximately equal to the free energy of hydrolysis of ATP. So therefore, they are able to move from one flux into the other flux. So it is like, you know, uh, whatever is the, the amount of energy you invested or in converting fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to PEP, same amount of energy is utilized in its converting it back also. Let me give you a very simple analogy. Analogy like, you know, whatever is the amount of energy that you have generated in the downhill process, same amount of energy is used for in, in maybe, you know, to bring it back. Okay, so this is how um, gluconeogenesis occurs. So finally, we are left with this product, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So with that, we come to the second roadblock.